this started in the 1800s and it said if you were an Indian child age 6 to 18 it was mandatory that you attend an Indian residential school. The government started the Indian residential schools and they were run by four churches and the RCMP started to go out to the communities and apprehend the children and put them in the Indian residential schools with the policy of assimilation. So across our nation there was 132 Indian residential schools. When my mom was six years old the RCMP came to her community. Prior to that she had lived a very traditional way of life and she spoke her language, they actually lived off the land, there was a lot of food, fun, culture. When the RCMP came to Fort Mackay and took her and her two sisters, her oldest sister was eight and her little sister was four and they took the three little girls by force. They took them kicking, screaming, crying and took them down the river and they never returned home again. They could not contact home, home could not contact them. My mom spent 13 years at Gruard Indian Residential School. It was a world away from where she was and it was a very negative experience. When you're 18, you get a bus ticket out of there. Your funding runs out. So my mom goes to the streets of Edmonton. You know what she says? She goes, we don't have a hope in hell. What, where I didn't know anything about survival out there. I had no skills. I had no education. Uh, I didn't even know where home was. And I had no self-esteem because I had been told for 13 years that I was no good. How does she move forward? And the story is not just from my mother and not just my aunts, but the thousands of children who attended, it was very negative that there was extreme neglect and abuses physically, emotionally, sexually, spiritually in the schools. We're in the fallout of the result of the policy of assimilation and all the other policies of the Indian Act today. It went so horribly wrong that the Government of Canada issued a national apology in June of 2008. What we see from survivors of Indian Residential School so many of them, their cultures were taken from them, they were not allowed to speak their language, and they were separated from their families. So when they went on to start their own families, it was really difficult for them in their own personal parenting. How do I parent my children when I didn't have that experience? Plus, I don't have the ability to you know, go to school, to get a job, to have the ability to provide for my children. That it's going to take us a few generations to move forward from this. It's not the ripple effect, it's not our history, it's our story. We are still in the effects of Indian Residential School. My daughter just finished law school. We're very proud of that, especially my mother, because she didn't even have the opportunity to go to university if she wanted to. And during that time of the Indian Act said we couldn't even hire lawyers, but now her granddaughter be can become a lawyer. And my daughter just had a baby. So for my grandbaby, for my mom's great granddaughter, the sky's the limit. Within four generations, things look different for us. And the challenge for us is to remember where we come from. So there's a balance. We have a foot in both worlds of moving forward but remembering where we come from.